Hi, friends. We have furniture, but I'm sitting on the floor again. Hi, guys. My name is Kate. Uh, if you don't know me, I run a small clothing brand called Mini Guru Studios. I mostly knit and crochet, but this is not that type of video. This is a sewing video. I am a beginner sewer, but in 2023, I want to sew more. I just bought a sewing machine last month. I broke it and then I was moving, so I haven't had access to it. So I haven't used it much. I've only made a couple things or just practiced my stitches. But I decided a good way to bring in the new year is to do a sewing project. So today we are going to try to replicate this skirt. This skirt has been with me since 2016. I don't even know. But this skirt has just stuck around. It just fits me really well and I wanted to recreate it. And by the way, like I said, I just got my sewing machine so I'm very much a beginner sewer. So this is not a tutorial. This is a informational video to entertain you and you can watch my process and where I struggle, where I think that I'm smart because I figured something out that's probably not that hard. I should wear a tape measure on my neck during every sewing video. I think that'd be kind of funny. So the material that I'll be using is actually a thrifted bed sheet. And I've been looking for a nice plaid for quite some time and I found this bed sheet. I can't even remember. I think I bought it at a Goodwill. This is the pattern. I think that this would be perfect for the skirt, so this is what we're gonna use. It's the same material as this, kind of like a flannel. And I'm sorry if you sew and I do a bunch of stuff that makes you cringe, but I think I know the basics of the skirt. It looks super short from single for some reason, but I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking. So it's for sure two panels, so a front and a back piece. The front panel has two pleats. Um, I just watched a video on Oh my gosh, guys, I forget what everything's called. I think it's called an inverted box pleat. I'll link whatever tutorials I watch down below so you guys can follow those. But yeah, there's two top stitched pleats and then the hem at the top is just folded over. Like this is not a very well-made skirt. So they just had some extra fabric and then sewed this seam, which I don't really know why they did that actually. <laughs> and then the hem is at the bottom. And then on the back side, I'm pretty sure the back panel is literally just a square and then they gathered it the length of the elastic. I'm guessing that the elastic is just the remaining circumference for how big you want your skirt to be. And then obviously hemmed at the bottom too. So I think the hardest part of this skirt is going to be measuring and figuring out how big each of these panels should be. Especially the front panel. I don't know how to add measurements with the pleats. I'm thinking it's not the worst idea to leave this hem and just use that as the hem of the skirt. Is that what people do? Is that what other sewers do? <laughs> or am I just really smart? No, I'm sure everyone does that, but I'm thinking I'm gonna leave the hem there, just the hem from the bed sheet. I'm gonna measure how long the bottom of the skirt is and then add like an inch for seam allowance. Because I'm thinking I can always take it in up top at the end when I sew the two panels together. Yes, that's that's my idea. This is honestly super nice because it's all, all the lines are already there. So I know exactly where to cut, um, to cut a straight line. So I'm using the Singer Heavy Duty, it's the 4411 model. I bought it second hand. After doing some research, I found out this is called a box pleat. So I'm gonna put the pleats in. Or should I sew the... No, I'm gonna put the pleats in, I think, and then do the hem after. Maybe I'll put the pleats in and then fold it over, then sew that to be the hem. I need to measure how long it is too. Throughout this video, I refer to the waistband as a hem, which I don't think that's correct terminology. I think the hem is only at the bottom. When I say hem, I mean the waistband, unless I'm pointing to the bottom of the skirt and calling it a hem. I'm so sorry about that. I just realized I need to iron this. And I don't know how to use an iron, so. I'm gonna read the manual. What do I iron on? I have an ironing board, but I don't have an ironing board cover. So can I still iron on that? Ugh. Do 
Do I use steam? Excuse the mess, we're still moving in. Okay, I ran out of daylight, but I'm finally ready to sew. We're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> I'm dumb. Where is this? Can I go that? <gasps> One pleat done. It's actually not bad. The only thing is, how's it supposed to connect in the middle there? But honestly, not bad. Look at that, cute. I just pinned the second pleat, but it's not exactly what they did on the actual skirt. It's a little bit different. I'm not sure how they got that seam together, but it looks fine. I don't think it's very noticeable anyways. So I'm just gonna do this side and then I'll sew over the front and then cut the back part. The lighting is honestly so bad. Hold on, I'm gonna get a dust clamp. I forgot to iron it anyways, so I just did that. Here we go, pleat number two. All right, that's the front of the skirt. Cool. Now let's go to the back and then we can figure out what to do with the sides and the, what's it called? And the waist. I lied, I'm gonna do the waistband right now. I just pinned it for like a inch seam allowance. Three quarters of an inch, I don't really know <laughs> what that is. And I'm just gonna do a straight seam on the top of the skirt. We encountered a bit of a jam. <laughs> so I hope the machine is fine. I broke my first sewing needle. I couldn't sew over the box pleat, so I switched to a heavy duty needle. Good thing I had some of them. I hope it works this time. We'll see. Nope. Okay. I think I'm just gonna sew around the pleats. It should hold its shape. <laughs> if it doesn't, then whatever. I don't really care. If anyone has any tips on sewing over multiple layers of fabric, Comment down below and let me know. I just cut the back panel out. I'm trying to figure out how I want to put the elastic in. I'm assuming you just sew it in. And so I just sewed over the edge and now I'm gonna feed the elastic through with the safety pin. I need a desk chair. So I've been hunched over on this little stool all day. So the elastic is fed. That's what that looks like. It actually turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Okay, so I just sewed the elastic in, and now I'm gonna use these two tabs to sew to the front panel. Now we just have to sew the two panels together and then I think we'll be done. All right, friends, I think I finished before 11 p.m. actually. Here she is. I'll do a try on tomorrow morning when there's better lighting. The elastic honestly worked out perfectly. It's so cute. Here's the original and here's mine. Hello, it is the next day and it is time for the final reveal. So this morning all I did was iron the pleats again just to get them a little bit more crisp and then I trimmed the excess fabric on the side of the skirt because I had a lot. Without further ado, here she is. I love the way it turned out. It turned out a lot better than I thought. So I'm a beginner and I've only sewed a scrunchie before and the back, the elastic, super convenient because I don't know how to sew in a zipper. And it makes it a lot more adjustable for different sizes. So this was the skirt that I measured everything off of and based my design off of. And this was a bed sheet that was like $2 and I still have a lot of excess fabric. I could honestly make like a little matching set if I wanted to. I might have to do that. So here they are side by side. The only thing I'll say is that I don't know how they got this seam to be closed. I couldn't really figure out a way how they did that. I'm sure it's some little trick. The mine are technically open, but I honestly don't think it looks bad. It's the same kind of material. Obviously the bed sheet is probably a little bit thinner. And here's the back. My elastic was a little bit thicker, which I think I honestly like better. The one on the right might have had a little bit more of a flare out. And I'm honestly pretty shocked how it turned out. I thought that we could chill on my couch for the rest of the video um i just wanted to chat about the things that i learned from this project because every single thing i do i learn more that's why i create so much is just to learn all different kinds of things the first thing i learned was how to pleat i learned that from a youtube tutorial i'll link it down below and along with pleats always comes ironing 
So I learned how to iron. I didn't really know how to use an iron because I've never had to use one before. It was kind of scary, honestly, but we figured it out. After that, we learned how to feed the elastic. So I just folded the edge over and sewed it and then fed the elastic through with a safety pin, which is a hack that you can find on TikTok. And then I learned how to change my sewing needle because I broke my first one. That's a rite of passage. I posted about it on my Instagram. So many people DM'd me and were like, yeah, it's so scary the first time, but get used to it. I also practiced a lot of measuring. Um, I'm not very good at measuring things. I kind of just hope they work out. This skirt, I did have to measure a lot with reference to the original skirt. Those are all the things that I learned and obviously just practicing my straight stitch. I'm not great at following directions. I kind of just let the wind blow me and learn as I go along. I can kind of list out the steps for you guys, which I did. Measure my waist and then I divided that by two. So your front and back panel. And then I added like six inches to account for the two pleats and some seam allowance. Then I made two box pleats following that tutorial. The pleats were 5.75 inches apart and then you just iron those, pin them, and then sew five-ish inches down. Then you fold over the waistband and sew it and the length ended up being around 14.5 inches. And then for the back panel, you want the length to be the 14.5 inches plus like 1.25 inch seam allowance and you want the width to be the other half of your measured waist plus four to five inches so it kind of bunches up in the back and then you want to cut your elastic to be the exact measurement of the half of your waist fold over the top an inch and a quarter and sew it and then you feed your elastic through with a safety pin then you can bunch it up and then sew the elastic into place and then you'll have those two tabs on the side to sew to your front panel and then you just sew the sides together and cut off the excess fabric and then at the end i just iron the pleats one more time and yeah that's all i did which kind of sounds like a lot now it was definitely not like a quick one hour sewing project like it took me most of the afternoon into the evening yeah i think it's worth it i feel like a bad youtuber for not doing step by step but i can try if you guys are interested in it if you guys don't get all the info from this video maybe shoot me a dm on instagram i can help i never measure anything that well so and what's really cool i started with that big bed sheet so i had a lot of excess fabric just in case i messed up i also have two yards of this that i got from a thrift store also this fabric i got from a thrift store i really like this one so i might make the same skirt with this material also i'll show you one more thing i have this recycled silk sari ribbon it's like nine yards but i think it would be so cute if they were little bows on the skirt so i might add those two but i haven't committed to it yet like sorry would this not be so cute it's so pretty like one big one right here or maybe two like right on top of the pleats. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. That is not what this video is about. I also just quickly wanna say thank you guys so much for all the love on the last video. Some of the comments literally made me tear up. You guys are so nice. Those kind of comments really keep me going and keep me motivated, so I just appreciate them so much. Thank you. I just started YouTube last month and you guys can be like my day one supporters, which is cool. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today and thank you for watching my video. I really enjoyed showing you guys how I made that skirt from a bed sheet. And if you make something similar or if you have any inspiration from this video, definitely tag me or send me any photos because I would love to see it. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see any videos in the future about sewing, knitting, crocheting, stuff like that. I'll definitely be posting a lot more on here. I had so much fun making this video, but I'm really curious. Comment down below what you're excited to work on in 2023. I need some inspo as well, so maybe you can get other ideas from the comments too. Thanks for watching, bye!